In today's video, I'm going to show you a circuit that I came across a while back. It's an extremely useful circuit. It is a capacitive proximity alarm circuit. Let me show you the schematic first before I get into this. The circuit is based on a 4049 IC, which is an inverter IC. Whatever the input is on the inverter, if it's high, the output will become low. If it's low, then the output will become high. What we have is a capacitive circuit that's in balance. We have these two trimmers, the 9 to 50 picos, C1 and C2, and right at the junction of the two trimmers, you come off and you have this metallic plate. Now I use a piece of copper flashing that I had laying around. It could be any metal. The reason why I use copper is because I could solder the wire directly to the plate very easily. So copper or brass. If you wanted to use aluminum or something else, you'd have to put a ring connector and drill a little hole and either rivet it to the plate or use a small bolt to attach the wire to the plate. When the buzzer is not sounding, that means the circuit is in balance. You adjust these trimmers until the buzzer no longer sounds. The metallic plate comes off the junction of the two trimmer capacitors. When your hand is brought close to this plate, you upset the balance. When you upset the balance, that causes the transistor right here, causes pin 6 to go high, sending power into the base of this NPN, turning on the buzzer. Now what I did, I didn't want to just have my hand sweep over it and have a brief beep. I wanted to have a beep that lasted for a few seconds before it went off, so I added a little bit of a delay. So right here, you see point A. That's the output of 6. There's a couple of ways you can add the delay. What I did is I actually had the circuit assembled already, and it was just a beep, and I added onto it. So I did option 2 right here. The emitter, instead of going directly to ground, I put a 47K resistor. At the junction of the resistor and the emitter, you come off with a 1N5818 or 1N4001 diode. That goes into an electrolytic capacitor, 100 microfarad. And from there, that goes into a 33K into the base of the NPN transistor. You have plus 9 volts from your battery going into a 500 ohm. 12 volt relay coil. The 12 volt will still work with the 9. If you only have a 5 volt relay coil, you can use a resistor in series with the coil to limit the current flowing through that relay. You could still use that relay. In parallel, across the relay coil, you have your 1N4003 diode. Protects the transistor against back EMF from the coil of the read relay. Over here you have your contacts. The normally closed is right there, and this over here is the normally open. So you'd have 9 volts flowing into your buzzer. I use the 12 volt piezo buzzer that goes into the normally open. When the circuit triggers, the buzzer will come on. If you want to use a lower voltage, a 5 volt buzzer, just remember to use a current limiting resistor in series with that buzzer. You can also just take the output. Now these outputs are designed for very low current. I think it's around 10 milliamps. So I really didn't want to go this way, but I'm sure it probably would still work. You could take the output. This is point A, which over here has the 1K originally. So we're going to go to point A into the 5818 or the 1N4001, and you could repeat the same thing as over here into the buzzer. If you don't use the read relay, the buzzer will come on, but as the capacitor drains down and the transistor slowly turns off, the buzzer will fade out rather than instantly go off. If you want it to instantly go off, you're going to need the read relay coil connected in this location, just like you see right here. Let me show you how this works. It works very well. All right, this is the entire circuit that you're looking at. 9-volt battery right here. This is the board that I assembled. This is the wire right here coming off of the junction of the two trimmer capacitors. The wire does not have to be special. It could be any wire. And then I use a piece of copper flashing, solder the wire directly to it. This is going to detect your hand in close proximity and metallic objects. Let me turn it on. 
show you how it works. The sensitivity can be adjusted with one of the trimmers. But once the sensitivity is adjusted, the wire is not that sensitive. What's sensitive is the plate and the circuit. So both ends are sensitive to your body approaching. So if I go like this, All right, and I go by the battery as well. In the middle, very, very low sensitivity. Now I can go underneath the wood. Now this is very good because you could put this on the opposite side of a wooden panel or a door. If anybody goes to touch the other side of that door, just having their fingers on the other side of the door opposite this plate will actually trigger the circuit. So let me go underneath this workbench, put my hand where this plate is and show you that I can trigger it. Here we go. All right, that's the end. And I'm not even right against it. So I triggered it from through the wood. So it's a neat circuit. We're going to place a link in the video description area where you can find the schematic. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you for watching.